I'm joined today by Norman Oler, who's a New York Times bestselling author, novelist, screenwriter, and also author of the book Blitzed Drugs in Nazi Germany. This is a very interesting topic, Norman, and I'm curious how you first started researching the topic of drugs in Nazi Germany. Well, it was a bit of a street research because um, a friend of mine who was a DJ in a Berlin underground um, club for electronic music, he told me this. Um, um, he told me this story that um, a friend of his um, is buying old furniture and bought an old set of uh, an old medicine chest which had pervertine in it, um, which is methamphetamine. He he read on the on the package uh, the ingredient is methamphetamine. And he tried it, and he said it still worked, even though it was manufactured in the 40s. That <laughs> that uh, strange story got me interested. And what did you find out generally about drug use, and particularly methamphetamine use, among the not not just? I mean, of course, we can talk about the German military and Nazis, but more broadly among the German people during the World War II era. Well, the Nazi dictatorship was a modern performance-driven society. So in '38, when Pervitin came on the market, a perfectly legal uh, product containing methamphetamine, and the company who made it, a Berlin-based company, they said, if you take this pill, you're going to be happier, you're going to work better, you're going to be, uh, you, have, you, you want to have more sex. Your life's just going to be a lot more fun. And uh, people are always craving these things, and especially we're craving this in Nazi Germany. So pervitin became a huge hit. Even um, chocolates came on the market, which were laced with methamphetamine. No one thought it would be a bad or dangerous drug. People just enjoyed the uh, housewives just enjoyed their methamphetamine laced uh, chocolates. So that everybody knows what we're talking about. We're not talking about you know whether people are starting to think about crystal meth in its modern form or whatnot. We're talking here about a a, a particular uh, sort of blend uh, pervitin which does have the stimulative effect of methamphetamine, uh, mild euphoria. It's sort of in a way also is, a, is, is kind of like a nootropic in the sense that it did encourage sort of a focus and concentration, right? I mean, talk to us generally about the effects of the drug. Well, actually, it is methamphetamine. It was just produced in a Berlin lab under perfect conditions. So you can't really compare it to street meth. Right. Um, but it, it's 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 like the original. It was it was a German invention, a German product, a high quality product. So when you took it, um, the neuro neurotransmitters in your brain were released in 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 a, in a, in a high uh, fashion. So um, you felt alert, and your brain was working basically overtime. So uh, it felt like you felt like your brain is working better. And, and then, of course, at one point, you have to pay it back uh, by, by the brain becoming exhausted. But people weren't really talking about the side effects back then. They were just happy that this new drug is on the market. Uh, coffee wasn't so available at the time, and people always crave a stimulant. So uh, a, a pill of uh, methamphetamine was the perfect drug for Nazi Germany. A lot of people have seen the video of Adolf Hitler sort of rocking back and forth in what sort of colloquially might appear to some as indicative of drug use. What evidence do we have related to drug use by Hitler? Well, fortunately, his personal physician, Theo Morel, kept a, a meticulous um, doctor's diary. So we have uh, a lot of days, uh, not every day is recorded, but uh, thousands of days uh, uh, between those two men, Morel and Hitler, are recorded. He became Hitler's personal physici physician in 1936 and was his physician all the way to the end. So we, we know uh, we know what Hitler took, and uh, he enjoyed especially uh, one uh, medicine which was called Oikodal in Germany, also a German patent. Um, the active ingredient is oxycodone. So we're talking about opiate painkillers, effectively, in addition to amphetamines. Hitler wasn't using methamphetamine. Hitler was into opioids. No methamphetamine at all, in other words. He took it once around Christmas 1944, but um, one methamphetamine. He took one pervitin, but his doctor didn't like pervitin. Pervitin, uh, with, which is methamphetamine, was basically a, a drug for the normal common folk, and it was a drug for the army to keep their soldiers running. What was the, the official reason, if there was one, for which Hitler was taking the opiate painkillers? Um, well, uh, People around him were wondering. Himmler was was uh, was wondering what is actually in those daily injections he's getting. 
um, between um, patient uh, Hitler, patient A, as Morel called him, and Morel. Um, there was um, um, they, they they didn't speak to third persons about this. So um, Morel was just his doctor, and Hitler said, "I have stomach cramps. I want my uh, oxycodone." Then he got 20 milligrams injected intravenously, and he was extremely high and happy, and thought that Morel was a very good doctor. There are people who have criticized your book, reviewers, saying that even if you're not making explicit this claim that a reader could come away thinking that the rampant drug use by Hitler, by other Nazis, in some way absolves them from some culpability during World War II and the Holocaust. Have you heard that criticism before? I'm guessing the answer is yes. And how do you respond to that? Well, I've heard this criticism. Um, it's actually a rare criticism. Most people do not have this criticism, but there are some. Uh, I don't know what. I don't know why they make this criticism. Because I can't really understand it. Um, I mean, in Germany, we have the law. Let's say you plan to murder someone, and then for doing it, uh, you drink two beers. In, in in German law, this doesn't lessen your um, responsibility for the crime. Sure. And the crimes were not done by the Nazis uh, by Hitler because they took drugs. It was not like uh, a good Hitler and suddenly takes drugs, becomes a bad Hitler and commits these crimes. So sure. actually, it's not him, it's not the Nazis, it's not the ideology, it's just the drugs. That's just not true. Um, the, dr the drugs play uh, a very important role for the regime to, um, to exercise their power. Um, but it does not, um, it does not explain or excuse um, uh, the crimes or the Holocaust, um, that those crimes have uh, everything to do with the Nazi ideology, which is a fascist I ideology, which is a right wing ideology, which doesn't like the other, uh, which is aggressive, which is racist. Uh, that those are those are the, th that kind of thinking and um, policy making. That's w uh, what caused uh, these horrible crimes, not the drugs. But it's very interesting to see how the drugs were being used and uh, what effects it had. It's a very, it's, it's very interesting. You get a very clear picture of how it actually worked. Yeah. And I, I guess my next question is about that, which is uh, now that we've gotten the sort of culpability question aside, could the drug use or do you believe that the rampant drug use impacted the course of how the war went? Well, I think basically the answer is Yes and no, which is uh, not not very satisfactory. But um, Germany would have lost the war in any case. Uh, it was not possible to win uh, World War II for Germany. Um, they had early successes in the so-called Blitzkrieg, which uh, means speed war, um, which is a strategy to move extremely fast and to surprise the enemy by moving faster than he can think. And that's what the Germans did in Poland and in France. And for those campaigns, they used a lot of methamphetamine to keep soldiers awake for three, four days and nights. Mm. This is what surprised um, the enemy, the Western allies. This is what surprised Churchill. He said to his French colleague, Daladier, uh, when the Germans were so fast, he said, they will have to rest. Every human being needs to sleep. They will sleep at night and then we can, you know, get closer. And they're not going to be that fast for, 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 for like a whole week, but the Germans were because they were pumped full with methamphetamine. That's a very interesting fact. And you can research that very closely with the documents that are still available in the military archive in Germany. So telling that story just gives you a better idea of how World War II actually was fought, but it doesn't excuse anything um, to say that one more last time. Yeah. D did uh, any of the allies start to think, hey, what if we also look into using amphetamines? Well, in the beginning, the allies simply did not know. Um, there were all kinds of rumors why the Germans are so good such good fighters, uh, the myth of the unbeatable Wehrmacht. Uh, they're so into Hitler that uh, actually they can fight better, but that, that was all not true. They were just messed up. I mean, it's just like a sports person uh, totally uh, using uh, the, the right doping agents. I mean, it just gives you an, advance, an, an advantage in a physical combat situation. Um, so, um, can, can you um, yeah, I mean, precise, the ad, can do we you have it? Did, did the allies at any point start to also say what, this is something we could look at doing w w as information about not necessarily the use well, of the meth, but just let's figure out ways to keep our soldiers awake longer? 
Yeah, the British uh, found out in late 1940, there was an article in, the, in an Italian paper which talked about the courage pill which the German pilots were using. Then the, um, the Royal Air Force uh, uh, did their own tests and they actually um, uh, agreed with the Germans. They said it's good to take amphetamines. They said it's not good to take methamphetamine, that's too strong for the British soldier, but let's take amphetamines. And they uh, supplied their troops then with amphetamine. So in the later phase of the war, British were fighting on amphetamines against the Germans on methamphetamines. And then when the Americans joined uh, the, the European theater, they were also being given the amphetamines through the British uh, um, uh, uh, troops. So um, the Americans actually still uh, are using uh, stimulants. Basically, all armies in the world are trying to figure out which stimulants to use. A lot of armies are using stimulants. The Nazis were the forefathers. Uh, in this um, unholy trade or holy trade, however you see it, uh, by doping um, their men to achieve a better military result. Norman, the book is fascinating. It's called Blitzed Drugs in Nazi Germany. And we've been speaking with the book's author, Norman Oler, who's a New York Times bestselling author. I really appreciate you talking to us about this. It was a pleasure. Thank you.